it's just a streaming. Edit this sucker. Learning and research methods. Q1 review session. There we go. Huzzah, huzzah. It's my stream. I'm sorry. Get out of here, iTunes. Nobody wants you. Nobody likes you. Oh, good. I love it. Pinwheel. Cool. <sighs> I'm sorry Twitch doesn't like your computer, Logan. Yeah, he's probably not going to make an appearance, unfortunately. Not this time. Yes, I do remember Kerrigan. <laughs> That's fine, Cat. You are more than welcome to stick around, but nope, this isn't any for any of your classes. Sorry, he's not going to come down. Gate's closed to the basement, so he's not going to come down. But it's 7.30. Hey, hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, open for questions. I've got some music in my ears. I enjoy myself. No dog. You guys are persistent. 
<sighs> it's good to see everyone in here, though. I probably should write a write a list so I don't have to go back to the. Learning research methods. Uh, okay, we don't have so Logan asks we don't have to do any actual stats on the quiz, right? Not yet. That was for research methods, and not yet. Quiz two. Stay tuned. <clears throat> okay, Logan asks, in my notes I have power is the probability of detecting an effect given that it exists. However, my stats book is defined as the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. They're the same. They are. They are synonymous. That's all I got for you. They're synonymous. I don't want you to get bogged down with um, anything more than that. You, it's fine. You, you don't have to believe me. Um, but they're literally converses of each other. Those things you stated are converses of each other. Rejecting the null hypothesis is the same decision as detecting an effect. Don't Ron Burgundy me either. Do you... You're welcome. I'm here to help. That's all I'm here. That's all I'm here for is to help. Anything else? Well, it's too bad. So, dogs. So until another question comes up, I have a fun uh, little uh, tidbit for you all. Who buy? Does anybody buy uh, soda from the vending machine by the Burgess Elevator? It's producing hot soda. Uh, two people today wanted to show me, make me feel hot soda. So I'm just curious if anybody has come across that. Um, I wouldn't open them right away. One, because hot soda sounds disgusting. Really disgusting. Um, but also, under high pressure, you get yourself really, really sticky. Yeah. Anyways. I don't know whose job it is to, like, call the vendors, but yeah, that's... That, that, should be taken care of. So. Because that's gross. G -g -g gross. <sighs> Still waiting for more questions. Pop on in! Yeah, you definitely have to. I don't. It was. It seemed like it was the same variety of soda, Diet Coke or Cherry Coke, I'm not sure. But yeah, Katie, it's, it's a big one for you. Okay, Summer asks, can you go into further detail on the multiple baseline design? I am having trouble sorting it out. Sure. Let me pull that up. Um... No, if only I could find it in all of this. Cool. There it is. All right. Multiple baselines. lines. 
So multiple baselines are taking a baseline measurement and then putting in a treatment and then putting in another baseline and putting in a treatment, putting in another baseline, putting a treatment, okay? This is different and you can you can actually go back up a couple of uh, things, slides, to um, the ABAB design like I have here. I should really not point, I should actually use my mouse. Uh, the ABAB design is really a good indication for what a multiple baseline could be because you have baseline treatment, baseline treatment. But what makes it a multiple baseline is that you actually have more than one person. See, two or more persons. Okay. And if I failed to mention that in class, I think um, that could have led to the confusion. So I apologize about that. But um, it's multiple baselines are for the multiple people that you have in your study, um, which sets it apart from single subject designs where you have to get multiple baselines for the person. But here we can do one baseline. As you can see here, it says person A. But if we had person B following the same track after a certain number of trials, that baseline is then moved into the treatment. Okay, Does that help? <clears throat> so let me know if you need further clarification. Okay, cool. Uh, let me write your name down, Summer. Okay, Paige asked, for the research methods quiz, will there be a focus on ethics that we took uh, that quiz over in lab? No. Um, there might be an ethics question, just, you know, broadly defined, but it's not going to be on the actual ethics quiz that you took for um, research methods, because uh, that's something completely separate. Okay. Okay, and then Logan D, can you explain spontaneous recovery again real quick, please? I have it down as extinguished response can be reacquired rapidly when CS or NS is once again paired with US, and I'm a little confused by what that fully means. Well, that's what it means. So spontaneous recovery is after you've done the initial pairing and you've got your CSCR, um, Pair. Where is it? Where are you? This is doing two classes. It's a lot. Uh, uh, that's not it. What am I doing? What am I doing? There it is. I think I saw the word basics and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. So there's spontaneous recovery in the slides. Hooray! Okay, so the strength of the CR on this graph is on the y-axis, and it tells you how much response, how much CR occurs at any given time. So in session one, you have a, no more US, and it, it decays at this rate. Session two begins, no US, it starts off at a smaller level. You can you can take you can see this curve here as the extinction curve. That's what you can take from this. Okay, and then so the spontaneous recovery is going back from zero up to some level of response, and that decays at a at a rate. Session three, there's a spike back up. This is all without the unconditioned stimulus being used. Okay? All right. Jesse is asking about... Hold on. Hold, hold up. Wait a minute. Jesse is asking, so I don't know if you go over the research designs or at least a good way to memorize them. Uh, the, yeah, the weirdest soda. I was like in a hot, definitely in a hot car. Uh, Jesse, I would say that um, a good way to re remember them is to think about the words, what baseline means. Okay, once you have an understanding of what baseline means, 
you can um, go from there. And what I was explaining for summer just a few minutes ago that I hope you caught was that um, single subject designs are generally speaking the AB or ABAB designs, right? Where you have either one baseline, one treatment, or multiple baselines in uh, and treatments. But if you put those designs in um, a situation where you have multiple people, then it becomes multiple baseline designs. And that can be modified in A, B, A, B, A, B ways. Uh, it, it depends. But the multiple baseline, if I had problem, if I had uh, control over vocabulary, I would say that, you know, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't call these these things because the multiple really doesn't help single subject versus multiple subject designs. But the word multiple in the designs is for how many people that you have or how many subjects that you have, whether they're rats or cockroaches or people. Uh, but single subject would use the AB, AB thing, okay? All right, so that was Jesse, okay. Um, Ozzy, I will not count this as a question, um, so you will have to come up with something else, but um, you won't lose points if you cry during the quiz, but I would say either one, since you do have to take both. Uh, but I would say it's slightly unsightly, TBQH. Also, you'd want to prevent the tears from getting on your quiz, because that'll make, like, your pen all runny and stuff, so... Let's not do that. Okay, page. For psych learning, can you help us distinguish the difference between overshadowing and occasion setting? Yeah, so this 100% has to do with uh, what is occurring and when. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to take the reverse on this one. Occasion setting has to do with a CS to CR occurring at all. So if you don't <coughs> if you don't have an occasion setter, then you're not going to get the pairing to occur or if the occasion setter is not there, then no CS to CR. So no CR essentially. Overshadowing is this, is the case where um, you present multiple stimuli and one stimuli probably the one that is more intense is going to be the one that causes the uh, the conditioned response, not the less intense stimulus, okay? So they are separate, okay? Um, occasion setters, if, you know, the thing's not there, then nothing's going to happen overshadowing has to do with multiple stimuli at once. Okay. All right. Um, so that's one for Paige. Okay, Emily, can you go over the difference between flooding and systematic desensitization? Yeah, systematic desensitization is a gradual gradual exposure to the stimulus that is evoking the condition response. So in this case, you know, we, we couched it in fear conditioning and fear th and, and fear therapy, and phobia therapy. So systematic desensitization is a is a gradual ratchet up in exposure. Flooding is all at once, is however intense you can make it, is all at once. Okay? And you can combine those two by doing what, what we call the uh, hybrid method, which is flooding and systematic desensitization. Okay? So they are two separate procedures. Techniques, I guess, is what we'll call them. Okay? Emily. Uh, K. 
Katie asks, can you explain latent inhibition a bit more? So let me pull it up. It's on here, right? Mm. I don't remember where it was, so that's not great. <laughs> I guess it was the extras, right? The extras. Where are you? Extras, extras. Read all about it. You're right there. Okay, because everything moves every time I do the, um, the thing. Okay, so here's inhibition. Um, so... Getting exposed to a stimulus means that you become familiar with it, okay? You start to make associations with it regardless of what it's actually doing. Um, so in the example here, you see that the, the dog is exposed to the metronome. Dog makes associations. It's going to make associations with that metronome. It's like, oh, that's a sound. Sounds come out from that. Ooh, I wonder if I can play a game with it. Okay. But if you try to use that same familiar object for the condition stimulus, it's not going to work. Because you already have associations with what it does, and it's not going to create the unconditioned response. Okay? Because you were pre exposed to it and it's now familiar. Okay? So, essentially, un unfamiliar stimuli are what are going to lead to conditioned responses when you go through the pairing process. Okay? Uh, so things you haven't come across before, which is why we didn't mention it in class, but is, which is why a lot of fears, just using fear as an example here because it's very strong. That's why a lot of fears and phobias are created when you are a child and it's your first experience with the thing that ends up being the condition stimulus. It was once neutral, but because it's the first time you've come across it, you're like, ah, crap. Uh, this thing is the thing that causes me fear, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to like it forever. That sort of thing. Okay. Uh, I've lost my place in the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think cat is, yeah. For research methods, will you have to identify any passages from Strunk and White, or will we know what we've learned as a rule of thumb? I'm not that cruel. You should be able to do that in your other writing classes, TBQH. But no, your writing will be assessed in your writing, not on your quiz. Not on the quiz, no. All right, Kerrigan, uh, are there any examples of fixed action patterns in humans, or is it primarily... Fa I, I don't think... Uh, I, there's... I, no. I'm just going to say no to FAPs in humans. Um, I TA'd for a uh, neuroscientist in grad school, and when he went over fixed action patterns, I'm sure he would have known, and he didn't. He didn't tell a, a single one. He talked about... So I talked about geese. Um, who did he? What did he talk about? He talked about a um, smaller bird. And I wish I could remember. I asked him for his slides one time, and he said no. This is after I graduated. Um, he was nice about it. He just didn't want to share. Uh, so I would use that example. Yeah. So no. So no uh, FAPs in humans. We barely have reflexes, to be honest. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Logan. Oh, that sucks. Um, yeah. You can always go back, though. My, my response will be 100% uh, in the VOD after this. 
All right. Cat, yep, you were just checking, and that's fine. But just for you, it's drunk and white. <sighs> oh, you know what? You guys get... Whee! I hope you're happy. Hey, buddy! Hey, buddy! Woo! Hey, go over there. Go sit on the couch. Oh, wait, no, 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 no! Sorry, he ran upstairs. All right. Max asks, can you outline the process of an NS becoming a CS again? I'm not entirely sure what you are asking, Max. Um, it would be in the basics one. I can always go back to this. Where am I? I think this is the best thing to answer your question, Max. Um, it just takes a lot of pairing, you know, as indicated by the colon. Oops, as indicated by the colon. Okay. I hope that helps. It probably doesn't, but I, it maybe if you could be a little more specific with your question, and then we'll come back to you. Hey, Emma. Uh, in terms of counter conditioning, the CS is associated with the opposite response of the intended CR, or am I confused? Counter conditioning, the CS is associated with the opposite response of the intended CR. I'm also having problems with that, uh, understanding that question. I think. Uh, I, 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 I did it. Where did I have? It must have been in the extras. Where are me extras? There it is. Where did I put it? Oh. Well, here's the example of, of the counter conditioning that I used, I guess. Um, so let me go back to your question then. A CS associated with the opposite response of this intended CR. Yeah, yes, I think is what you're asking. The idea is that you want to get the opposite response. You know, you well, I guess the way that you're asking is you want you want the CS to have the opposite response. Bonds. Not of the. Uh, you just want to end it there. Not of the intended CR. Just the opposite response. And that's the that's the uh, track of it. That's why you would do use counter conditioning. <laughs> the quick sight of the dog. <laughs> Okay, Ozzy asks, is there a good way to identify the difference between sensitization and pseudo-conditioning? Not really. Um, you have to take context into uh, account and how it's being described. So it's not a matter of, is it one or the other? Well, I mean, it could be one or the other, but it depends on how, you one, you're describing it, one, you're describing it, and two, what's the context of the response? Um, Maki. Uh, okay. Cat, for psychic learning, can you give an example of habituation? Um, what sounds are occurring next to you? We'll, you, you answer that and we'll come back to it. Katie asks... For research methods, could you explain the difference between ordinal and interval scales of measurement? Sure can. So, 
ordinal scales are a step up from nominal, so you have mutually exclusive categories that can be ranked. Okay, you can put them in an order, hence the name ordinal. Okay, the problem with that ordering is we don't actually have the intervals between the orders defined. Okay, so the gap between one and two can be x number of units, and the gap between two and three can be y number of units, where y does not equal x. Okay, interval is the situation where that ranking has now been, um, the intervals have been defined. So the gap between one and two is x, and the gap between two and three is also x. And the gap between one and five, it, or one and, one and two, sorry, one and two is two x, to be uh, for two to four or one to four. Sorry, it's it's eight o'clock. Uh, ignore that last part. The intervals are defined in the rank ordering. Is really what you need to know. Okay. So if you have a ranking, but you're not sure of what the uh, intervals mean, then you can only test. <clears throat> it through ordinal statistics, which is why we brought up the discussion of Likert scales. Okay, Cat, have you um, assessed what uh, sounds are coming through um, your area right now, other than my voice? Well, Katie, you're going to have to remember the difference. It's going to be very important to remember the difference. You still haven't answered my question, Kat. What sounds are going on in your life right now, at this very moment? And I'll add to that while you're getting the delayed question. Did you hear them before I asked you to think about them? It's quite enjoyable. I'm actually listening to the Avid Brothers in my headphones right now. <sighs> so it's just not like dead quiet down here. That would be the worst. The worst. You guys are getting very few dropped frames. This is amazing. Only 1%, 1.5%. 60 frames per second. Wow. I got the bandwidth of days. I'm still waiting to help you with your question, Kat. Um, you haven't answered my questions yet. You must be doing something else while also doing a review session. That Netflix is pretty, it's pretty important. <laughs> hmm.
Oh, now nobody's talking and I'm super bored. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean other people can can jump in and ask questions, but yeah. Like, uh, we're all waiting for Cat to respond to Dr. Spawn. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's good stuff. You all bring my life joy. I tell you what. Will the Dodgers clinch the division? They already did. Like, the Braves are pretty open. Get out of here with your baseball talk. No. 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 <laughs> Cat, you asked, can you give an example of habituation? And I asked you, what sounds are in the room right now? And... Did you hear them before I asked you to recognize them? Excuse me. <laughs> My chair. Or is that a dog barking? Couldn't tell. Still kind of awkward, cat. <laughs> Does it make sense? I mean, I didn't really say anything. But that's habituation. You know, the sounds are occurring whether you hear them or not. Uh, so you become accustomed to them. So that's perceptual habituation. But this that idea can be um, expanded out to behaviors as well. <laughs> Don't worry, Paige. You are you are completely clear of all responsibility. It was just un, un it was poorly it was poorly timed. You can blame Cat for not charging her laptop before going to your room. <laughs> am I clear? Am I clear now? I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, good stuff. Well, I have you down. So if y'all, uh, if, if you're you're both good, you've both asked questions. So, oh wait, Paige, did you, ask, you did you ask a research methods question? Let me let me see. Oh yes, you did. Uh, page down here. Cool. <sighs> yeah, you're good. You're both good. You got it. Don't worry about it. It's all good fun. It's all good fun at 8 o'clock at night. It's all good fun. Max, okay, good. you know, I don't even need the sarcasm uh, filter on that cat. I just hear it in your voice. Uh, okay, Max asks, can you explain inverse scale 
measurement for resource methods. We talked about it today in class. Oh, um, you mean um, reverse coding? I'll wait for you to give me the affirmative on that. <laughs> okay, thanks Logan for stopping by. Okay, so reverse coding is when you have a set of items for one construct. One construct. Okay, so you're asking various aspects about that one construct. So let's take, for example, Beck's depression inventory. There are several questions, or actually I should say items, that you give an affirmative or negative um, response to on a scale, uh, Likert scale. And there are several questions asking, you know, various things about depression, like um, interest, uh, sleeping, um, uh, sadness, um, you know, mood, mood being sadness, and, and various things like that. And what you would do in a reverse coding situation is if all of those are worded in a way that somebody with depression would answer all fives, let's say on a scale from one to five, yes, I, this, this is me, um, you know, if, if five represents like often, okay, uh, you would want to throw in a couple of reverse coded so you don't end up with response acquiescence. Okay, it's a way to make sure that people are responding in the thoughtful manner that you want them to respond. So you, then you would code an item, or, or sorry, word an item in the opposite direction. So somebody with depression would actually choose a one. And so that would, I guess, represent never in this you know, made up example. Um, and you would do that several times throughout. Um, some scales have uh, an equal number of reverse coded items to positive coded items. Um, some do, you know, 60 40 split. Some do, you know, two thirds, one third. It, go three quarters, one quarter. You know, it, it all depends on how much you want to make sure people aren't responsive acquiescing um, and you get the thoughtful responses uh, that you get that you want for that so that's what uh, reverse coding um, would would be uh, you just word your items in such a way that the person responding would still respond in the way that reflects them but choosing a different response on the survey. Okay. Max, did you want me to revisit your learning question or did you want to ask a different learning question? Okay, Kerrigan. Um, with habituation sensitization, would what would be considered an intermediate intensity stimuli? <sighs> yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, the intensity thing is probably, for all intents and purposes, going to be... So the intermediate part, sorry. The intermediate intensity stimuli is going to be a individual difference for everyone. Okay. Uh, we can put some stimuli in the high and low boxes because that's really what they are. Like an explosion is going to be <laughs> high intensity, not only sound, but pressure and damage, and all, all sorts of things, lots of light, you know. But intermediate stimulus, uh, intermediate sensit goodness gracious, intermediate intensity stimuli are going to be in the eye of the beholder or the ear of the beholder. <clears throat> okay, Max, sounds good.
ten. Okay, one, two, three. Shibba dibba dib. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be that way. You know, what's intermediate stimulus to somebody else isn't gonna be, or to someone isn't gonna be the same. It could be high to, you know, the person next to you, really. <laughs> So, little tidbit before cut, uh, more questions come in. Uh, so I get uh, a text from Astrid earlier uh, this afternoon after division meeting, and it's a video of Ollie, five years old, drawing a dinosaur, watching a video on YouTube of somebody drawing a dinosaur. So giving instructions on how to draw a dinosaur, and he was doing it, and it looks freaking fantastic. And you're like. Who replaced my little boy with a little man um, who is apparently a really good artist in like overnight? Like what? 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 You drew a stegosaurus? Uh, you know, back plates and all? Like what? I don't think I could have. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't five when the internet existed, let alone YouTube. Uh, like, I don't think I could do that at five. Crazy. And then he turns around and he's a huge butthead. So, you know. Cool. Children. Ellie's very cute because she tries to emulate him, and so she's been doing a lot more drawing now, too. And... Um, <laughs> he'll show us, he'll be like, look at what I drew, look at what I drew. And um, she'll be like, ah, look at what I drew. And hers is scribbles, so that's kind of funny. Yeah. Children. Children. I don't think any of my randos came back this time. It's a bummer. They're pretty good. They're cool dudes. Oh well. Oh well. T. Shane. Still waiting for, I mean, if this is how it's going to be for the next 75 minutes. Oh boy. Just sitting here talking to myself, you know. Uh, Murphy weighs 65 pounds these days. He's a heavy boy. He's a real heavy boy. Put him in a couple of mornings ago. I had to hoist him up into our bed because we put our bed on risers. So I hoisted him up. He can jump up. He's just a baby. And um, uh, <laughs> I tried to lift him up and I nearly destroyed my back doing it. Because <clears throat> he's 65 pounds. We told our vet that, who's a friend of ours, and she's like, what? He's 65 pounds? She had to approve uh, his heartworm medication, so they saw that coming through. Kaylin's here. All right. 
Uh, what's up from the Walmart break room? Hopefully I'll be able to actually hear you answer this, but my connection is ridiculous because, you know, Walmart break room. You got it. A power and effect size. Um, put a pin in that. So if that's not going to be on the quiz. Um, that's what I was trying to do with uh, Logan's question. Or no, Max, one of them. Max or Logan asked this this morning in class. Uh, we'll go over that in more detail um, when we actually start talking about designs and statistics for those designs. So hopefully you got that answer, Kalen. Um, it's a good question. I appreciate that question. Um, but I'll say soon. Soon. I decided to cut effect size from that particular lecture. Uh, and I will include it when we actually get to the um, the appropriate places to discuss them. Hmm. And definitely be sure to uh, watch the VOD after we're all done tomorrow, this evening, when you're done with work at Walmart. But very cool that you're able to do that. Uh, all right, As Max asks, "What is the difference between semantic generalization and stimulus generalization?" Very good question. Semantic means words, and stimulus means things. All right, moving on. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we'll come back. Where's my basics? Uh, okay, I think it's right here. All right. Ooh, a da -da -da. Generalization, yeah, right here. Okay. So, semantic generalization... Blah, 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 blah. Let me try that again. Semantic generalization um, is about the meaning of words. Okay. Um, and in the same vein, the sound of the word also comes through. If somebody's speaking a word to you, you both get the sound of the word and the meaning of the word. So if you're talk if you've classically conditioned somebody, let's say a la the born, well, more or less the born identity, the first of the born trilogy with Matt Damon, or American Ultra, which was a movie and also a real program. What the Soviets wanted um, Pavlov to do for their Soviet soldiers is he wanted the they, this all it was based on um, the meanings of words and how they connected, or more uh, uh, more recently, um, the Winter Soldier in Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, well, I guess maybe Civil War, not Winter Soldier, because they actually show the procedure in Civil War. Anyways, I'm getting a little digression. So the meaning of the word is what would have led to the brainwashed behavior in all of those examples, okay? As opposed to the sounds of the words, okay? And um, this, this is all stimulus generation here, okay? This is stimulus gen uh, generalization, or this would be a stimulus too, and this would be semantic, okay? Does that help? Just the the one thing that I will say, Max, is um, semantic always means meaning. So meaning can be generalized, and it's more effective than the sound of the word if you're using words as your 
uh, NS to CS. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, drop down to six viewers. Oh, everyone's leaving. That's all right. Everything's good. We're all good. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Well, if there are no other questions, I mean, you're for, feel free to ask uh, non-school-related questions if we're waiting for people to ask school-related questions. You know what's good? Aldi's Bell V. Oh, I should come on now. Al Aldi's Bell V. Uh, uh, seltzer water or sparkling water, I guess. I do like lime. I do like lime. You know what? You guys, whoever's watching now, if you haven't yet and you are a subscriber of Netflix, watch the um, Mind Explained series. Okay, so if you, last year, if you didn't catch the Vox um, short episode, like 20 minutes or something, 15, 20 minutes, of, you know, insert thing explained here, if you didn't catch that, watch that. But then also watch The Mind Explained. So good. We watched two episodes last night. They're about 20, 25 minutes. We watched um, Memory, and they didn't get anything wrong. Uh, and then we watched Dreams, which was fun. And they also didn't get anything wrong. So I have high hopes for the next four, uh, three episodes. Really good. Uh, it dropped on Netflix on Sunday. So if you hadn't heard it, you know, you're not behind the times. I mean, you are uh, for the other explained stuff. But uh, as far as um, as far as mine, no, it's really good. It's really good. And I figure out how to incorporate them because I think people would appreciate hearing from. Emma Stone, who narrates them, versus me, so, you know, I know when it's a losing battle. I'm sure that, um, if Emma Stone was your professor, it'd be better. At least I say that. Hey David, uh, for learning, K 
Can you please explain compensatory response model again? Sure. Let me pull that up. Compensatory response. So, like I said, the this one's not going to be on the quiz. I deleted that question. <laughs> I deleted the Emma's Emma. Yeah, Emma's always do it better. Yeah, I, guess, I suppose so, right? Uh, so this one's not going to be on the quiz, but if you want to know it more, so the idea is that um, when you form a CS to CR relationship, there are going to be compensatory responses. These are, essentially speaking, antagonistic responses um, characterized by the A process and B process. You can read my notes here if you want. Um, and the idea is that, you know, you're not, and this one is almost entirely an explanation for drug use in humans. Um, and so it's not necessarily like, hey, the substitution or the preparatory response theories are wrong. It's just an, an additional idea for uh, people and drug addiction. Um, so the idea is that you, in, in addition to wanting the euphoric feelings from certain drugs, just like heroin, over time that actually gets replaced by the compensatory process of avoiding withdrawal symptoms. Okay. Um, because once your blood pressure increases from being decreased from the heroin after it's gone from your system, you now are withdrawing from the drug. Now these withdrawal symptoms do increase in intensity the longer you go without a hit, which is why it's called a fix, because it fixes things, okay? So it's the the abuse, according to this model, is not so much, I want to get high, uh, is, I don't want to feel like shit. Okay? So that's the compensatory response model. And many of the cues, or the stimuli, the condition stimuli for the drug use, come from uh, drug paraphernalia, locations, um, people you know, you have a wide net for the drug use. As I'm sure you might be aware, um, as I'm using an opioid for um, for this example, and it's, it's really clear in central and rural Illinois that that's what's happening. And you can see in my notes, many overdose fatalities do not, generally speaking, involve a huge amount of the drugs. Okay. The critical factor is where the drug is taken. Okay. But not going to be on the quiz. I deleted that. I deleted that question two days ago. Um, okay. Ozzy, 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 Ozzy. Oy, oy, oy. Two questions. One, what would be considered special populations uh, from an ethical standpoint? That would be prisoners, pregnant women, um, uh, intellectually disabled individuals, not physically disabled individuals, intellectually disabled. And you could also throw in developmental disabilities, but developmental disabilities can also include people who have full faculty um, and can make their own consenting decisions. So kids are not a special population. They require an extra step. 
they, you have to get assent from the child, and you have to get consent from the parent or legal guardian, but they are not considered a special population. Uh, and number two, can you explain the difference between excitatory conditioning and inhibitory conditioning with an example? Um, yeah, give me one second. Uh, all right. Um, actually, I don't have any specific examples for you, but this is how your book lays it out. This is how your book lays it out. Most of the, um, where is that slide? This one, I think. Most of the examples that are given throughout these chapters on classical conditioning are excitatory, meaning that you present the neutral stimulus with, with the unconditioned stimulus. So pretty much all of the examples that I've given in class since we started talking about classical conditioning are excitatory. Okay. Inhibitory conditioning is the neutral stimulus is paired with, or uh, is paired with, associated with removing the U.S. or the U.S. not being there. Okay. So, um, an example of that would be, um, other than what I have on the screen right there about the dog. Uh, if the owner's not present, okay, well, that's actually not a very good example because the owner being not being present seems to suggest that that's inhibitory, but it's not. Uh, why pregnant women? Because they have another human inside of them, a growing human. Uh, so it, inhibitory conditioning would be like, turning the light off and then pairing it with the food or turning the sound off and then pairing it with the food because you've removed it so if you turn the light off then you might have a CS or CS to CR pair okay for like the dog salivation thing and, I, and I, that's as <laughs> Without having um, the textbook in front of me, because it's at, at my, in my office, you'd probably explore that from the book, I would say, if there are other examples of that. Oh, uh, also add to the special populations institutionalized individuals who may not be prisoners, so voluntar voluntary um, Admissions, they are also special populations. So if you commit yourself to a psychiatric facility or hospital uh, for mental health issues like suicidal ideation, you are now a member of a special population. Even if you have full faculty to make your own autonomous consent. And it doesn't mean, none of this stuff means that you can't test them. You just have to go an extra, you just have to go through more uh, uh, review. So it goes to full board. Um, and uh, protections have to be in place for these people. Uh, prisoners, I think, is the, is the stickiest of subjects, pun intended. Because um, very it's very easy to make an argument that there is coercion because they are literally there against their will. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
Joseph. It's almost bedtime. You bet. You bet, you bet, you bet. So we've been watching... So we've been reading Harry Potter to Ollie um, because he needs to record his uh, uh, minutes read. And right now he's, you know, getting read to and eventually, you know, he'll read his own stuff. So we're, we, we decided to jump into chapter books as opposed to all of the more you know, preschooler slash uh, younger um, toddler and infant books. Although, we aren't really reading infant books anymore, so that's nice. Um, so we started reading Harry Potter, and um, he just he just doesn't get that I do voices, and, um, you know, the only one that appreciates me doing voices when I read Harry Potter is Astrid. Soon, I guess. Maybe by the time he's older, and he'll be like, Dad, I remember when you read to me in Harry Potter and you did voices, and I didn't appreciate it then. And I said, yeah, I would say, yeah, you, you didn't appreciate it. And you lost out on the brilliance of my voices in Harry Potter. So. But then, Astro and I have been re-watching them. We, uh, we're almost done with Goblet of Fire before moving on to, uh, Order of the Phoenix. It's blanking on the name. Blanking on the name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, only seven skipped frames. That's pretty freaking amazing. I didn't I was not expecting that. I thought when I came up to this decision to stream, like my internet would take a dump. But, you know, I guess it, it's working, so cool. That's all one can hope for, right? Please stop being quiet in chat there. I feel like I'm talking more to myself this week than last week. <laughs> because there aren't any other comments. You can type, even if somebody else is typing. Let's, you know, is that obvious rule number one? We're not all talking, so we can all type at the same time. Um, what else? This doesn't have to be as formal as you're making it. Uh, that's obvious thing, too. Um... What else? Yum. Yum yum. Yum 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 yum. Meow mix meow mix please deliver cat food nailed it. Or, I mean, just, you know, it's been four minutes since the last chat message. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I, 
listening to music while talking and reading, it makes my brain want to explode. Well, that's the good news about the music. Like, it's stuff I know, and sometimes I want to sing along with it, but then I realize that nobody else can hear it, and that would be a bad idea. That would be a real bad idea. Because that would be live on the internet. So we won't do that. But I appreciate you, Emma, framing it in such a way that makes me sound like I'm superhuman, but I'm not. I am not. No, I can hear it. It's... I can hear lovely, lovely Averett Brothers and their melodic tones. They're good. I can hear the words. Now, if other people were talking in this stream, if the chat was a talk chat, then that would be a different story. But otherwise, I would just be talking to myself in a quiet room. And some might say that that's a bit crazy. I'm not saying that I don't do it. I'm just saying at this particular time, I prefer to just, you know, maybe wind down with some dulcet tones. But good use of using uh, course concepts. I applaud you for that effort. <laughs> oh, man. So what I'm planning on doing, I have this awesome picture. So over my head, like right here on the wall, I'm going to put a um, this old photo that I had. It's an old photo. I took it in Mexico, oh man, 10 years ago. No, nine years ago. Uh, and it's a wonderful little fishing boat on Cancun's Lagoon. Uh, we went to this fish taco stand, and they had some pretty good fish tacos. Oh, awesome salsa. Uh, but they went and caught their own fish, and so this was their boat, and I took a, took a shot of it, and it was late. It was the evening, and you can see the, the I, mean, I was just looking at it, it's like on the mantle over there. Um, it's, it's, it's a great scene. I'm just going to put it right there. So when I move, everyone who's looking at stream can can see it. So I'm going to put it right there. I just need to get some command strips. No, don't don't stop trying, uh, Emma. Don't stop trying. Always try to do real world applications. None of this means anything if you don't. Well, we're just kind of talking out of our bums if you don't. Excuse me. Oh, only four people in a stream right now. Goodness gracious. If you're in a stream, you should identify yourselves. Maybe I'll give you fake brownie points for doing so or you know what I'll have uh, I'll have wicker um, give you stars because I think everybody's like yeah I'll watch the VOD later it's fine I think that's what people are doing maybe making it two hours wasn't wasn't really Maybe I won't do two hours next time. I'll just do an hour for combined. For midterms when everyone has quizzes. Saw on Netflix yesterday a uh, new show, and this is why Netflix is losing subscribers. It's called Tall Girl. 
And the premise of the show is that she's a tall girl. Now, I don't mind that there's a show called Tall Girl exploring the issues of being a tall girl. But did we need it? Was it was it something that is going to get a lot of views? I don't know. I don't think so. Sounds good. I do enjoy bribery too. <laughs> Wait, did I say that out loud? I did. I mean, I enjoy bribery as a concept. It's an interesting concept, of course. I am an academic. I enjoy abstract ideas that sometimes get people into trouble. <clears throat> okay, my is may may have hit the limit here. I think pe people left. Seriously, if you are in chat right now and you are one of the four people who are watching me at the moment, um, if you don't have any more questions, I think this is probably going to be it. Maybe I'll give it to nine. I did say nine thirty, but. I don't really want to sit here with nobody saying anything. Now, I'll say till 9.30 if people have other... If you want to converse about other things. But other than that, yeah, I really can't talk to myself. Oh. <sighs> Oh boy. Uh, piece of advice that people for people who want to go on to grad school that's a good question Anzi um, so I will preface what I will what I'm about to say with that programs are going to be different whatever the subject is things are going to be different all around master's degrees certificate programs uh, uh, doctoral programs whether a PhD PsyD MD I, I whatever um, they're all gonna be different and they're all gonna and, and and there are different challenges for those different programs but I will say broadly, make sure you're taking care of yourself. There has been a large uptick in mental health issues across all kinds of degree programs, specifically PhDs. Um, and there isn't as much support in those cases. Um, because even though college, getting an undergrad degree is a choice, it's almost like a, a uh, not choice choice, right? A lot of people feel like they have no choice uh, to go to college. But you certainly have a choice to go to grad school. Um, and so... There, there are people who will 
try to tell you, I mean the royal, royal you, um, they will try to tell you that you should pick yourself up by your bootstraps or something similar. Like, hey, you asked for this, yeah. And then there are some academics in these programs who, across all kinds of programs, whether they're professional or not, or research, um, will say, I suffered, so you have to as well. And that's such a wrong mentality. That's, that's such a BS mentality, uh, I will say. Uh, I do agree that there, it is grueling. They should be. You are going to be an expert in your particular field, so you have to uh, embrace the suck sometimes. But the idea that I'm going to make people under me suffer because I did is a really cruel worldview, in my opinion. Um, so I would say take, uh, take care of yourself. To answer your question, Ozzy, is a really good question. And um, things are going to be different across the board. What you want to do, where you want to live, how much money is it going to cost, um, how much money you're going to make, what, uh, if I have a partner, what is that partner going to do? Is that partner going to be near me? Is that partner not going to be near me? Are we going to try long distance or is this the end because I want to do this? Okay. Um, so, you know, there's that kind of thing. Anya has joined. Huzzah. She must have gotten off work. Is that true? Or just waited till 9 o'clock to join? A lot of people are worried about learning. So most people did. Okay, Anya. You, did Hole just deal with stimulus response connections? Sorry if you already answered this. Well, if you were here earlier. <laughs> no, still at work. Aw. Uh, okay, well. Um, I think your question is, like, did Hull do anything else? And the question is, I mean, he was a behaviorist, but he was offering other explanations. Uh, so the thing that I want you to know about him is that he offered further explanation beyond just S to R. That there were, he's like, there's stuff in between S and R that we should probably consider. Yeah, Ozzy, I, I mean, I have more thoughts too, so if you want to um, stop by and chat. I know, I know that's what you're thinking about right now, so um, we can definitely go into more specific detail about what you want to do if you want. So I assume Anya is uh, using Twitch app. It's actually a pretty decent app. They did a good job. What's not decent is the Twitch Roku app. You cannot watch video on demand. You can only watch live, live stuff. And it's like, really? Seriously? I know it's a live streaming platform, but come on. <sighs> I mean, in the last hour and a half, I've been, yeah, I've been live for about an hour and a half. There have been, let's see, one, two, three, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 15 different people across two, both classes. I mean, it's quite a bit of overlap, of course, but yeah, it's good stuff.
If I wasn't teaching, what would I be doing? It's an interesting question because that presupposes that I decided not to go to grad school. Um, well, teaching was always the goal. Well, teaching was mostly the goal when I started grad school. I actually did want to do quite a bit more research and be maybe a, mm, a better, <laughs> have better outcomes in my research than I actually do. Um, so once I started grad school, yeah, teaching was the goal. Um, before that, though, I was managing a self-storage facility, so may have been stuck there, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I like psychology, and that's what my undergrad degree is in, but... I, um, uh, I don't know what I would have done at that point. I mean, I took a year off to decide, and then I decided, you know what, I want to go back. And, oh my god, a ball, one of my kids' balls just bounced down the stairs and scared the shit out of me. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know, that's not a very good answer to your question. Uh, I don't know. Oh, look! It's the person who scared the shit out of me. The dog was playing with it and it wanted to talk. You want to come and say hi? Oh my god, okay, fine. You look fine. Do I? Thanks. Yeah. It's Astrid. Um. Uh, this is mirrored. That's weird. It's not mirrored. It's not. Because I'm going off this way. That is a mirror. It's like not what a mirror does! Oh, wait. Hi, guys. I don't have a PhD. <laughs> and you're also off camera. Oh, there we go. I don't have a PhD. It's not my fault. Um, sorry, the dog was trying to pop it. And I didn't want both my children crying. Oh my god, it scares the crap popped. out of me. I'm like, who's coming down here? Sorry. And there's an Elsa shoe, too. So that's fun. All right. Oh. Elsa. Elsa shoe. Yeah. The one that's not I don't know how it made its way down here. Children. Yeah. Good sense. All right. Uh... A little family time for you. Uh, okay, Anya, sorry, you asked a question like two minutes ago. Uh, research methods. Can you explain beneficence? That is acting good. It's acting good. Being a good person. No, so, I would say the... Oh, look, it's the dog again. Hey, bud. What's up, dog? What's up, dog? You want to come up here? Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Come up. Come in. Hey. Come here. Murphy. There we go. There we go. Yes. Yes. Whoop. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Uh, but uh, by doing good by specific actions or just anything good? Well, yeah, specific actions by, like, not being bad. Like, not having um, malicious intent. So, I said be be beneficence or non-malfeasance. So, not being... Um, not being the Disney character Maleficent. So, it's... Beneficence is the opposite of Maleficence. And I know you know who Maleficent is. Oh, whoops. Sorry, everyone. Banging into my desk. Oh, this desk is super creaky. <laughs> Rejects in the attic. She justifies her action. Oh. <laughs> Not in a sleeping beauty. <laughs> Apparently she goes super all bad in um in the new movie. 
like fully into her how she was in uh, Sleeping Beauty. She was pretty damn vain in Sleeping Beauty. Like, true villain. Like, if you're going to turn into a, a dragon and try to kill someone, I think you, you fit your name. That's Dr. Swan's hot takes on Disney properties. Uh, hot takes, hot takes, hot cakes, hot takes, hot cakes. <sighs> Welcome to the jungle. Doobie doobie doob. Doobie doobie doob. Keep the terms independent, independent, or will you use explanatory and predictor? Uh, when we get to, and I'm sure you're jumping in there from Philip's class, which is fine. Um, when we get to multiple regression, I will use predictor probably most likely. Uh, independent, independent uh, work fine in that situation, but it's more appropriate to use predictor and outcome or criterion. Um, Independent and dependent are, generally speaking, connoted. So they have connotations for experimental research. So, I mean, that's why we use them broadly. Um, but the goal of multiple regression is to predict. So that's why, or the goal of regression, I should say, because it can be bivariate regression. Uh, is the goal is to predict. So, um, yeah, we will be using those those terms though appropriately when they when they come do you know you know. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, on the quiz, I suppose is what you're kind of asking, kind of getting at. Uh, independent and dependent variable is what I use because we haven't gone over MR yet. It's rough. It's rough stuff. Uh, I just, I, I have to share with you all, there is no shame 
This is not, these aren't my words. This is from somebody named Dystopian Scribe. Kelly M. Hayes. There's no shame in admitting that you were previously speaking from a less informed place. There's a lot of info in the world. No one has all of it. We do our best, and at our best, we help each other learn. Good words. Those are real good words. You'll be good to remember them. Oh, snap. Oh, damn. Where'd everybody go? I feel like it's just you in the chat, uh, Anya. Oh, no. Oh, there's six people in here. Who are you? Who are all you people? It's not like I'm doing a public live stream. Come on now. Just kidding. I am doing a public live stream. You might be aware of that. I am really tired. Wednesdays. Am I right? <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I, you, you, you. Maybe if I started playing a video game, everybody would be like, oh my gosh, he's playing a video game. I probably could play a video game while talking to you about psychology. I uh, don't know if I will do that, because it'd have to be a low... It'd have to be a low-impact game. I couldn't play a game that I want to play, unfortunately. I uh, it'd have to be like Tetris. Totally could, totally could pull it off. Uh, I don't know how appropriate that would be, though. Yeah, I guess it would be. A, yeah, I, I, what am I saying about appropriate? I can do whatever the fork I want on this. It's mine. Except, you know, invoke not great things, say inappropriate things, hence me saying fork. <laughs> oh, man. Do, 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 do. Operationalization is where we follow the path for behavior. I don't... Can you ask your question another way? Rephrase that. I'm not sure what you mean. So when you get that, you let me know. There is a delay. There's about a... I don't want to say two second delay. And then maybe. Yeah, it's about two seconds. No, it's more like five seconds, actually. I could count. I could count if I wanted to. But I, I, I don't want to. So, like, yeah. It's not like worry about it and stuff. But anyways, if you rephrase that, I can help you better. I mean, what I'll say is that. In order to observe constructs, we need to operationalize them. And those can be behaviors, but they don't have to be behaviors.
Wasn't that where we had to write out all the steps for behavior? I'm, I'm still struggling to see what, what you're talking about. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, either I'm... Well, I'm, I'm certainly not understanding where you are, but either I'm blanking on what you had to do, and that's entirely possible, uh, what, what, you know, what the class had to do for operationalization, because we're now in week five, and it's all bleeding together. It really is. It's just... <laughs> no! Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, you do have an extra day in... Yeah, that's fine. Well, if you have to go back to work, enjoy. Enjoy yourself. <clears throat> shoop a doop 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 Well, I suppose what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to give it until 9.20. If no questions are asked by 9.20, I'm going to call it. If I don't fall asleep before then. <sighs> I'm going to do some OBS mixing right now. Uh, I'm going to rename this to Review Orientation. You bet. Thanks, Anya, for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um... Oh, no, I disappeared. It's okay, though. I'm still here. I will be back in just a second. Um, Where is my video? There it is. There I am. I thought I'd just go big. There's nobody asking questions about anything anymore. And you can see more of the crap behind me, too. If you really want. Oh, baby, do, boo, boo, do, 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 Could even make a in all my free time. Oh no, I dropped my pen. No shit. Uh, I could even make a uh, uh yeah three three people left in chat. <laughs> I don't think any more questions are gonna be asked in the uh, three minutes or the five minutes, six minutes, five minutes. Uh, I could even make like a my, all my free time. Uh, stream starting soon thing for this. It would be nice. It would be really lovely. <gasps> oh, goodness. Doodly do do do. Doodly do do do. If you're interested, a uh, a good um, documentary about LGBT issues is on Hulu right now. I mean, it's it's not new. It's about five years old. It's called "Do I Sound Gay?" I'm showing that to my ECC 101 class 
uh, today and uh, into Friday, uh, and it's pretty good. It's about this writer and obviously now filmmaker who uh, who's on a quest to find out whether or not he sounds gay, and he kind of wants to change it, but I'm sure by the end of this documentary, he's going to come to the realization that eh, he probably shouldn't change. It's probably a part of him. And if people have a problem with him sounding gay, then that's their problem, not his. We haven't reached that point yet. It's still exploring how the quote-unquote sounding gay has come about. It's actually quite interesting um, to hear linguists talk about it. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm most interested in, <laughs> linguists talk about it. Uh, but yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, I also recommend, um, another, uh, documentary that I was going to show, but didn't have time. It's called Growing Up Gay, and it's about, uh, it was a BBC documentary about a singer of a band. The band name escapes me at the moment. Uh, but his name is Ollie Alexander. And the uh, interesting thing about it is uh, my son is Oliver Alexander. And, you know, he, he goes by Ollie. So that's fun. Uh, um, so I recommend that too. Uh, you'll have to find the, that, that one on um, Daily Motion because you uh, can't watch it on um, the BBC iPlayer website because we're not in the UK. Rights issues. All right, well, don't then I don't want to watch your dumb documentary dummies. No, uh, you can find it on Daily Motion. It's only uh, it's only 60 minutes long. So um, that's good. Uh, I, I definitely feel like I'm talking to nobody now. Two more minutes and then I am uh, deuces. Oh, oi, 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 I like doing this stream, these streams, um, probably only gonna do an hour from now on, I think two hours was too much, so if you can't make an hour, probably 7.30, 8.30, then, uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do, uh, because streaming for two hours is, <laughs> the rest of you are just gonna go, or watching the VOD, I'm sure. Probably not even watching it to this point. So, yeah. Shooby dooby doop, dooby doop, dooby doop. Shooby doop. Well, in any case, I hope anybody who's currently watching or watched earlier in the evening in the stream. Got their answers questioned, and, um, you know, enjoyed themselves, yourselves, whatever. Uh, yeah, check out The Mind Explained on Netflix if you got it. I think that's, um, I think I'm gonna keep, keep promoting that. And if you know somebody in Psych 101 tomorrow, tell them good luck because they have a quiz. But I think that's going to end it for this stream. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Uh, like I said, I think I'm the only one here. Well, well, there are three... There are three people. Yeah. You know. And anyways, in any case, goodbye, everybody. Uh, bye.